Oh, you did it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, welcome to the Privy Council meeting for the month of December. This is the first Privy Council meeting of December. And we haven't had, well, I haven't had one in a while. It's been a whole month. Uh, all right, let me find something here. We're going to be talking about two different things today, and that really be it. Because uh, this is more like a getting prepared for future meetings meeting, basically. Um, okay, so let's talk about the executive order, the, the one, number six. Mm-hmm. Signed by you when you were the interim prime minister with my authority. So. Yep. Alrighty, so let's see. Five, yep. Let's see. Become senators, yep. Great department rescinded, yep. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yes. Um, so that, yeah. This is what the second thing is, what we're going to do. Not voting power, all done. Rolls. Okay. So we're going to be talking about, since you're here, I guess I'll go ahead and talk to you about what role you have. So Mm -hmm. since now the Department of Communications and the Department of Foreign Affairs have been uh, dissolved, um, um, which is fine because you're still going to have, you, Senator Bree, is still going to have the roles of an ambassador uh, to talk to the listed nations that you got. Um... I'm gonna put you in charge of a of creating a single baseball team for the oh yeah the baseball association is also dissolved so but is now a role until it does become a position again so um so we're still gonna have that it just won't be uh as governmentally mandated anymore. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm going to go ahead and make those into roles instead so we can still have a sport and show it off in the future until it's privately owned. So, yeah, so you're going to be in charge of the Valley Station Knights. Mm-hmm. Um, so that means you decide everything that happens in the Valley Station Knights. Um, you're still going to be ambassador to the nations in the list that I gave you. Um you're going to be in charge of reporting on who's been active and who has been not active in the Queen of the Knicks. And uh, I'll be expecting your next report on December 8th, which is the next meeting uh, for the month of November's inactivity. Um, let's see. What else is there? can't think of any more roles that you have or to give you. I think that might be it. Okay, I think that might be it. So obviously for me, I, I as the prime minister, I'm the main, I'm the top ambassador, obviously. Um, so I get my own list of nations. So that part's obvious. Um, with the new executive order, I'll be presiding over the Privy Council. I will have no voting power. So, yes, we are going to do votes here. Um, so, but it is not the same as the unicameral's vote unless it is set on our, on our procedural bylaws, which is the next thing we'll be talking about. So, I will be coming up with procedural bylaws, and then you and the other senators We'll have a vote to see if this is advisable or not, but I get the final say if the bylaws are good or not. So you guys are going to vote if you think it's advisable or not, and I'll consider uh, and I'll consider your all's advice on it. So that's basically how we're going to do this now with almost everything in every executive meeting or executive action. So... Um, this also includes how to enforce laws as well. Hopefully, next year we'll start getting enough citizens to have const- elected constables. We'll see. Um, let's see. 
I won't lie to you, this meeting might be a little short because that's really all we got to talk about. So, in the procedural bylaws, um, yeah, we're probably just going to have to, I'll, I'll be, I'll end up being the one writing it down and everything, so nothing really new there. Um, I'm trying to think of something else. There was something else. I don't want the meeting to be too short because I know there's more stuff to talk about. Uh, well, I know the treasury has been updated in a minute. I mean, I do have some change lying around that will surely update the treasury, but at the moment, the treasury has not been updated. Um, uh, what else is there? We were supposed to have a meeting with the Pennsylvania Federation today, but... Uh, they have not responded to my text at all, so I guess we're going to have to reschedule that meeting at a later date. Uh, yeah, they still haven't responded at all. So, uh, we're still waiting on the uh, court hearing for House Bill 22, so we're just going to have to wait on it. That's all we can do. Um... I do know that the next Union Carroll meeting is this coming Monday. That part I do know. Uh, I don't know if I have a bill to propose. Do I have bills to propose? I don't know if I have bills to propose. Let's see if I do. Do I have bills to propose? I probably don't. Nope, I guess not. Okay. Well, other than trying to reform our entire legislative branch, well, obviously I have that. Um, I should have, I should have worked on that today. I didn't think about it. I know it's in my journal though. If I know where my journal is, huh? I have no idea where my journal is. Oh well, I'll find it later. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, excuse me. Mm. Oh, the uh, Bagley Democratic Republican Commonwealth has posted on Facebook about our ratification of the treaty. Mm. Oh, that's right. And we'll be having a summit about that treaty on December 15th. When the guy becomes, when the person becomes a uh, president again. What's his name? Oh, President Brandon Begley. Okay. That, I figured that's what his name was. Okay. So, yeah. So, once Brandon becomes president again, we'll have a summit. Man, what a great ally to have. Begley's all about us. I didn't think I didn't think we were that great to him, honestly. Wow, the meeting's only been going on for 15 minutes, and it looks like we're almost about to end this soon. I don't want it to end that quick. Give it an extra hour or something. Right, so I guess I'll announce what we're going to do for next year. Um, I don't really have an executive address right now because I've been gone for the whole, I've been on personal leave for the whole month. Uh, and that includes the government fall break that we had. So what we plan to do next year is to randomly choose parks for every month and go to these parks and open up a uh, stand and um, give away snacks, food, all that stuff. But here's the, here's another plan with it. We'll be asking for donations and how much money people donate, not purchase, donate. Uh, how much people donate their money, it depends on what prize they can get. So we're going to try to do that to... Um, 
we're going to try to do that to obviously help the cause, but to make sure we're doing everything legally. So as long as it's donations and not a profit-making capability, because um, everything's going to the treasury, so it's not like the money is going to get spent on the dime. So, but <clears throat> so we're going to get on donations and snacks, food, drinks, uh, shirts, whatever that we plan on giving away. Um, so that's what we're going to do all year next year. Try to help not only get more supporters, but get more citizens as well. Um, um, can't think anymore. I won't lie, I've been out of sorts for a bit, so just give me a second to think. Um, oh, the smelter. So, yeah, so this weekend, we should be making the smelter. And if I have to do it by myself, I will. But I am going to be at the Queen's Palace this Saturday um, to make the smelter, get it done, get it over with, and make my promise to the people, like I said, years ago. I've been Prime Minister for five years, and I've only achieved, I don't, I don't even know how many promises I've even made. I just know that the smelter was gonna was supposed to be made years ago, and it didn't. And now I finally got it, and I'm sick of waiting. And now I made and I made that my top priority. So since I made that my top priority, look what I've done. Because everything's already at the palace, ready for the smelter to be built. So, um, so as of right now, I think. Trying to get more citizens should be our top priority, as well as getting supporters too, but we need citizens. So that's why I made the efforts to talk to the Begley Democratic Republican Commonwealth, the Sovereign Municipality of Amer Australia, and the Pennsylvania Federal Republic uh, to discuss about dual citizenship uh, with those three nations. And regardless of how many people they have, if those citizens accept to be um, Queen of Manic citizens. They have to follow our term and conditions uh, by, by treaty. Um, Australia, it was a little hesitant on the treaty because he has no terms and conditions. He's okay with Nixies going to his country and apply for citizenship regardless of where you are. But we have to have terms and conditions for Amer Australians becoming Nixie citizens because we, um, not because we don't allow anybody. It's because if you are in a uh, government office in Amer Australia, you cannot run for office in Nix. So that's literally the only term. And obviously, give uh, in that treaty, it gives them information on how to become a citizen. Just do the citizenship application process by asking us. So it's real simple. Uh, nothing too major. And what's the other one? I got it right here. And let's see, there's a third one. Oh, yes. And the Nixie Constitution laws and regulations apply to dual citizens while they are within the Nixie borders. So, because my executive order cannot apply to the dual citizens because. Uh, they were ori um, uh, they were originally citizens of another nation, so therefore, my executive order needs to be exempted from them. So I'm going to make a change. In addition to my, pretty sure it's the first executive order. I'm gonna relook that real quick. I'm pretty sure it's the first executive order that talks about the citizenships and properties. So let me see that real quick. Alrighty. Yes, it is. Okay. Yep, it's the first section. That's what I thought. Okay. So, yeah, so it's going to be, I'm going to add a fourth section to that executive order um, regarding 
uh, dull citizens, the uh, citizens from other nations that became naturalized mixed citizens, are exempted from this executive order unless they uh, revoke uh, or if they have their citizenship revoked from the nation they reside in or from or if they withdrew their citizenship from the nation they reside in so that's the fourth section i'm going to add i'm gonna go ahead and do that now actually that'll be something i do all righty let's see i guess i might as well show off there we go all right here's my first executive order it's an old one uh, about 10 months old <laughs> gets revised every 30 days so here's the first part that i just mentioned um so there's going to be a fourth section now did you have have you already signed this one yes okay this is uh yes it's actually well it'll probably have to get signed again not gonna lie it'll probably have to it's probably gonna have to get signed again um I don't forgot where I went. Um, I forgot I was screen sharing too. So, um, let's see. What was I? Right. There we go, because I'm uh, it's gonna have to be signed again because of this new edition. Um, so since this executive order's got updated uh, with a new edition, technically it'll technically be a restart. So it'll still be executive order one, but because with it having a new edition to it, it is now going to be a an updated executive order with the same number. Here we go. All right. So there we go. Added the addition. I'll print it out later and sign it. Um, I could do it now. I just not at the moment. Um. Yeah, we're at the 25 minute mark. Uh, let's see. I don't see Senator Ross nor Senator Ivar, which is very disappointing. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I think this is really. I can't really think of anything else <clears throat> other than just concentrate what we got. We're back to work now until our fall, uh, winter break on December 23rd. So we got plenty of time to do a lot of things. So, and I expect these things to get done <clears throat> or at least get worked on. Um, I will be back on editing the website, which will still be a lot of work to do because I would like to make that website look very pretty. And I plan on doing that. So I'm gonna have to work on one page at a time to make it look very fancy and pretty, I also have to fig I still got to figure out the whole editing process. Hey, speak of the devil, and he shall appear. Welcome to the meeting, Senator Ross. Hey. 
Yeah, you made it. What does that mean? Huh? What does that mean? Oh, I was saying you made it. Oh. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Only about 23 minutes late, but you made it. I'm still saying nothing. That's why I turned my screen off for a minute. Well, that's fine. That's why I got the gavel for. So, anyway. So, what you missed, Senator Ross, is that we have discussed about what we're doing next year. Uh, discussed about the new executive order. And we've also discussed about dull citizenships uh, for, from three other nations. Are you aware of these new of these updates? Nope. All right, fine. Then pay very close attention to them because I'm going to tell you. All right. So, what we discussed today was Executive Order Six. Uh, regard in the you will have to abide by this because it involves you. So, Executive Order Six. Actually, I'm pretty sure I can share screen with you. So you can read it yourself. Here we go. Right here, the Privy Council, which is composed of the Prime Minister and five senators, shall function under this executive order. So the Privy Council, of how it's founded, are, is going to function the way it's supposed to function as a council, which ha which it has not been uh, doing, really, most of the time at all. So I am forcing it to be run like a council. Part two, all executive officers shall become senators of the Privy Council. So since I only got three people in my entire executive branch, every, uh, those three people are senators. That includes you, Senator Ross, Senator Bree, and now Senator Ivar. So everybody's a senator. Part three, all executive orders that created the departments for the executive branch, except for the Census Bureau, are hereby dissolved and rescinded. So executive orders two and five have been rescinded. So the Department of Communications, the virtual uh, Nixie National Baseball Association, and the Department of Foreign Affairs have been dissolved for, uh, at this time. Uh, the Census Bureau still remains. Part four, Privy Council procedures shall be created separately from this executive order, but whatever is written on the procedural bylaws shall be abided. So I will be making, I will be making a document that will be our procedural bylaws on how we run this council, um, every uh, Privy Council meeting. So yes, it's going to be similar to the unicameral, but it's not going to be like the unicameral at all. So there will be voting, whether it's by voice or uh, or depends on how loud the answer is, basically. So or it'll be by uh, clicking the sorts. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna be making. I'm gonna be making bylaws, and here's what we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna process this. Um. Number five, procedure bylaws can be proposed, amended, and repealed by only the members of the Privy Council in accordance with the procedural bylaws. Meaning, I'm going to make a procedural bylaw that talks about part five. And whatever that, whatever the procedural bylaw says, that's how you got, that's how you and Senator Bree and Senator Ivar can propose, amend, or vote to attempt to repeal, uh, a procedural bylaw. Number six, the Prime Minister shall preside over the Privy Council but shall not have voting power but has final say after the Privy Council has concluded with their decision of advice to the Prime Minister. So even if you guys highly advise against something that I want to do in regards to executive action, I do not have to follow it. That's basically what part six means. Seven, all jobs quote unquote, in the executive branch will now be classified as separate roles. So therefore you only have one job and that is a senator. But you as a senator have multiple roles in your job. 
Senator Ross, you are still an ambassador to a good list of nations. So just because you're sitting, so your title is not going to be ambassador anymore. It's going to be senator. Your title will always be senator uh, for the time being. And, of course, Part 8 says what I just said. Each senator will be assigned multiple roles by the prime minister. So whatever our role I gave you, take it and leave it. Part nine, this executive order will rescind after we have reached the population of 40 adult citizens. That is executive order number six, and I plan on enforcing it. Are you aware of executive order six's uh, process of, or enactment, really? No. Do you have any questions about the executive order? I do not. Do you understand what the executive order is telling you? Yes. Okay, because I, I asked that question first and you said no, so I was confused for a second. My bad, Ed. My mind is slipping me right now. <laughs> You're not alone there, sadly. All right, the second topic we were on was dull citizenships. So if you look here, I have made a blank treaty for the three nations that are interested in talking to us about it. And here's our only three conditions for dull citizens. In case you don't know what dull citizenship is, it means a person from another that was born in another nation as a citizen of that other nation can become citizen of the Queen of the Knicks. However, there are terms and conditions that naturalized citizen must follow. Citizens from another nation can become citizens of NICS by simply following the citizenship application process. Simple. Citizens from another nation that are in government office cannot run for office in NICS until they are no longer in any government office in their home nation. And lastly, the NICSI constitution, laws, and regulations apply to dull citizens while they are within NICSI borders. So... That is our dull citizenship treaty to the Begley Democratic Republic and Commonwealth, the Sovereign Municipality of Australia, and the Pennsylvania Federal Republic. Those are the three nations that are that were interested in talking about those citizenships. So, and if they agree to this, their people get a chance to become Nixie citizens, and I hope they do. Um, I do not remember the population of the Pennsylvania Federal Republic or the um, sovereign municipality of America, Australia, but the Begley Democratic Republic and Commonwealth population is eight, and only half of them are in government office. So at least we get eight more people. At least we get eight more people. So I'm okay with that. All right, now to the first executive order that has just been updated, and I'll have to sign it again as a physical document. The first executive order I made in February that I'm sure you're aware of, Senator Ross, regards to the Declaration of Private Property to be claimed, Territories of Nicks. And this first part right here is, con uh, is contradictory to dull citizens. Because this executive order is hereby enacted by me. This executive order hereby declares that all privately owned land by citizens, members of the Queen of the Knicks, shall be declared as territory of the Queen of the Knicks and shall be under its jurisdiction in regards to services requested by the citizens and members. This does not apply to dull citizens because, um, because of that other nation's existence, we cannot lay claim to a dull citizen's property. So therefore, I have to add a fourth section to this executive order that this executive order will not apply to the dull citizens from other nations unless their citizenship from their home nation has been revoked or if they have withdrew their citizenship from their home nation. And I plan on signing that to, uh, tonight. So, are you now aware of the fourth section of the first executive order? Yep. All right. Let's see. 
good. All right, another topic we discussed um, is what we're doing for next year. Next year, we plan on 